Welcome to the world of Coventry Paranormal and the fifth of our five videos looking into famous mysteries that, over time, either through thorough investigation or by a confession, have been solved. So sit back, relax and enjoy. And remember that you can join us either via our YouTube site, where we have a number of our own investigation videos, and you can also see the other four videos in this series, or you can contact and chat with us via our Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter pages. So without further ado, let's move on. And in this episode, we take a look at a strange sound recorded in the South Pacific. The Blue. In 1997, the bloop was heard on hydrophones across the Pacific. It was a loud, ultra-low frequency sound that was heard at listening stations underwater over 5,000 kilometres apart, and one of many mysterious noises picked up by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA as it's known. Several articles in the years that followed popularised one suggestion that the bloop might be the sound of an unknown animal due to its organic nature of the noise. A theory that elevated the bloop to the level of a great unsolved mystery. The sound source was roughly triangulated to 50 degrees south by 100 degrees west, coordinates that were a remote part of the South Pacific Ocean, west of the southern tip of South America and the sound was detected several times by the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array, which is equipment that was originally designed by the United States Navy to detect Soviet submarines during the Cold War. Here is the sound of the bloop played at 16 times normal speed as it's heard on the NOAA website. Due to the fact that it's such a low frequency sound, it's difficult for some humans to hear. This is why it's played at a speed 16 times faster than the real sound. This is also the reason why it's earned itself the nickname the bloop. In real time, one bloop lasts just over a minute. At first, as I said, it was thought to be some kind of an animal, possibly a blue whale, but even the largest on record, a length of 110 feet, was not nearly big enough to account for the bloop. Other theories range from USOs and identified submerged objects to a distress call from the lost city of Atlantis to proof of the existence of a megalodon, an extinct species of shark that lived approximately 15.9 to 1.8 million years ago and weighed in at between 60 and a whopping 115 tons, growing to an estimated length of 60 feet. Some cryptozoology believers have even claimed that the noise could point to a new species of marine creature that they have called the bloop. Also, there have been the obligatory conspiracy theories of military experiments ranging from advanced propulsion to nuclear weapons testing. NOAA and Oregon State University seismologist Robert Zayak said, what has led to a lot of misconception of the animal origin sound of the bloop is how the sound is played back. Typically, it's played at 16 times normal speed, which makes it sound like an animal vocalisation of some sort. However, when the sound is played in real time, it has more of a quake sound to it, similar to a thunderstorm. And, after much investigation, that's exactly what it turned out to be. A quake, not a thunderstorm. An ice quake, to be more specific. Or, and I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing this right, a cryosism to give it its proper name. The No Events Programme has attributed the sound to that of a large ice quake. The bloop was the sound generated by large icebergs as they cracked and fractured. The icebergs involved in the generating of the sound are most likely between Bransfield Strait and the Ross Sea, or possibly even Cape Adair, a well-known source for cryogenic signals. 
It's easy to see why the bloop was such a compelling mystery. According to Noah, 95% of the ocean is still unexplored by humans, and not long ago, an entirely new species of whale washed upon a beach in New Zealand. And, as you're about to see, it was only in 2004 that the first video footage was recorded of a giant squid in the wild. Here it is. Also, the bloop is not the only sound recorded by NOAA. Here are some of the strange sounds that were also captured by the Equatorial Pacific Ocean Autonomous Hydrophone Array. First, we have a sound nicknamed Julia. It was recorded in 1999 on March the 1st. NOAA researchers suspect the hydrophones picked up the sound of a large Atlantic iceberg running into the seafloor. Next, we have Upsweet, first recorded in August 1991. Now, unlike most of the other sounds here, Upsweet can still be heard. In 1996, it was put forward that the sound was the result of seawater and volcanic gas interacting and creating a kind of resonance pattern. Not long afterwards, a French research vessel found volcanic seamounts in the region from where the sound was heard, which backed up this explanation. Next, we have Slowdown, recorded on May 19th, 1997. This signal has not been heard before or since. In real time, the sound slowly descends in frequency over about seven minutes, and to the date of this video, the origin of the sound is still unknown. And finally, from slowdown, we move to another unidentified sound known as the train because of its uncanny resemblance to an American style train whistle. The sound was recorded on March 5th, 1997. So, to paraphrase Donald Rumsfeld, we know there's a lot we don't know about the deep ocean. Even though we now know what the bloop is, or at least we now think we know what the bloop is, this could be more frightening than not knowing at all. Experts are now saying that Antarctica is breaking up a lot quicker than first thought and that this melting of the polar ice caps could, if we don't do something about it, make us wish that the bloop was an alien USO or even a megalodon. Well, thank you for watching and we hope that you enjoyed our presentation. As I said at the beginning, don't forget to check out the four videos preceding this one. You can find them along with some great investigation videos on our YouTube page. You can also join the growing CPI community by joining us on social media, either by visiting our Facebook page, our G Plus page, and our Twitter page. So, until next time, goodbye and sleep tight. <laughs>